I have a bunch of tips and tricks for you to get the most out of your iPhone. This video is sponsored by one of my all time favorite apps, Drafts. Let's get into it. So my first tip is about setting multiple photos to be your wallpaper background and having the system rotate through them. So if you go into settings, wallpaper, add new wallpaper, you can select photo shuffle. By default, it'll select a few photos for you, which is great if you don't have your stuff organized into photo albums and it's just kind of sporadically added. But if you want to be selective about what photos are added, you can hit select photos manually. From here, you can then pick an album or go into all of your photos and you can drag and hold your finger to select a range of photos if you wish. Now, this is limited to 50 photos, which I find to be a bummer because what I would love to do is select all my photos that I've taken of landscapes and just add them, but that's well over a couple hundred. Once you have all of the photos selected, hit the add button. You can then hit the more button to change how frequently these images are cycled through. So you can do hourly, daily, on tap, or when you unlock your device. In the wallpaper settings, you can also choose to blur your home screen's background. This gives good separation between apps and widgets and the background. In settings, notifications, you can change how the lock screen notifications are shown. You can select count for a more minimal look. This is great if you really care about the image that is on your lock screen and you don't want a bunch of notifications covering that up. The iPhone's keyboard has a few tricks up its sleeve. First, you can long press on the globe or emoji icon and you will see all of the keyboards you have installed. The icon changes depending on if you have third party keyboards installed or not. You can switch between these keyboards here, but what is more interesting is you can enable the one-handed typing mode. This shifts the keyboard to the left or the right, making it easier to type one-handed. It will then stay like this until you hit the arrow button to move it back to being a full screen keyboard. You can long press the space bar to move the insertion point when you're typing. This is great if you need to go back and add some text to something or break something up. When typing, you can tap the spacebar twice to add a period and then a space. This has been around for an incredibly long time, but there are people in my life that are actually just now finding out about this because I tell them about it. It's really handy. The built-in iOS keyboard also has the swipe to type feature. Now, this has never really clicked for me, but I know there are a ton of people out there that are really fast with this. When in an app, you can swipe to the left to go back to previous apps. You can just keep doing this through multiple, multiple apps. You can then swipe to the right to go back through that list. Swipe up and over to get to the app switcher. Now, here's where something a lot of people do that is really not necessary. A lot of people here swipe up on apps to force close them. You do not need to do this with every app. If an app's not responding, fine, force close it. But force closing an app does not save you battery. It doesn't save you memory. Uh, it, it actually slows things down because it now has to cold open those apps when you go back to reopen them. Uh, I, I, I see people do this all the time. In fact, my mother does this. She brings much shame upon our family for doing that. You could drag and drop content between iPhone apps just like you can on the iPad. Just long press on some content like a photo or text, start a drag, close the app, open the next app, and then drop it. Because there's no multitasking system on the iPhone, this is a really cumbersome action. This isn't something I do a lot. It's usually easier just to copy something and then paste it. Uh, but it is nice that drag and drop is there if you want to select like a range of things. Uh, that could be nice. But what would be really handy is if the iPhone had split view. So kind of like how the iPad, you can divide it up into halves, left and right. But on the iPhone, if you could do like top and bottom split view and drag and drop content between them, oh, that would be really nice. This video is sponsored by Drafts. Drafts is one of my all time favorite applications. It's a text editor, but it does so much more than just editing text. Drafts is all about speed. When you open it up, you're greeted with a blank document. This way you can write down what is in your head and get back to whatever it is you're working on or whoever you're with. Drafts isn't just about inputting text though. There is a ton of actions for taking that text and putting it in other apps and services. Whether you're adding a list of tasks to your task manager or generating a PDF from that draft or so much more. You can build these custom actions or go check out the Drafts Directory 
directory for pre-built ones that are made by incredibly smart community members. There's even a custom theme you can install to make drafts look the way you want. One's even made by yours truly. Drafts is on the whole Apple ecosystem, iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, and the Mac. The iPhone app is built around the idea of quick capture so you can quickly take a note or jot down an idea. You can then come back to it later on whatever device you want and save it to another app, add a tag to it, or deal with it as if it's a task. The Drafts Watch app is incredibly fast for capturing notes. I use this for when I'm out and about and have an idea for something or want to check something out later. The thing that I like about Drafts is that it scales to your needs. It can go from being a scratch pad to a full-fledged note-taking app. I use Drafts all day long to save links, write notes, work off custom templates that I've built, and more. Drafts is free to download, so go check it out. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can go download it and all the custom actions and community features as well. My thanks to Drafts for sponsoring this video. In the camera app, you can actually use the volume buttons to take a photo or start a video, so it acts as the shutter button when in the camera app. If you plan on editing your photos, I do recommend shooting RAW, but just know that it is going to take up a lot more space on your device. The benefit of shooting RAW is there's a lot more data in the photo, so you can recover things like the shadows and highlights a lot more than you can on a standard JPEG photo. If you need to get to the wallet quickly, whether it's to pay for something or scan a loyalty card or a gift card or anything like that, you can double press the lock button to open wallet in accessibility, touch, scroll to the bottom, and enable back tap. This allows you to assign a bunch of accessibility and system features to either a double or triple tap to the back of the iPhone. You can even assign running shortcuts to this as well. The Siri Suggestion widget is a widget that shows eight apps and changes based on the time of day and context your iPhone is in. The phone learns your behavior so it'll just suggest the apps it thinks it would use when you are here. What's nice about this widget is it's a medium-sized widget, so it takes up the same amount of space as eight apps would on your home screen. So you're not really losing anything, you're essentially gaining dynamic apps on your home screen with it. In the home app, you can pin certain accessories to the top of the page. Long press and select the accessory details, then enable it in your favorites. So for me, I put my thermostat and garage door opener here. You can customize what's in Control Center in Settings. Home is one of my favorite features in Control Center on the iPhone. This will suggest devices it thinks you need that you can control at the time, but you can tap on the Home icon and get a list of everything. Your favorites will be pinned at the top. This is how I quickly get into my house when I get home. Shazam is also in Control Center, so if you're out and about and you hear a song, you can just hit the button and it'll recognize it for you. Magnifier is great if your uh, eyes aren't so great anymore. It's weird, after I turned 30, my eyes kind of went eh, and I'm assuming after I hit 40, my eyes are gonna go ugh, and when I hit 50, my eyes are gonna go ugh. So magnifier is great when uh, you need to see some small text or magnify something. iOS has a built-in scanner. This is a huge feature for me. In files, you can hit the menu button and select scan document. Then it'll save it to some folder or something in the files app that you choose. The scanner is also built into notes and mail. In mail, select the scan document icon, and in notes, select the camera icon. The system will auto crop any document that you are scanning. You can also add multiple pages to the document. The measure app is something that I think a lot of people sleep on. This has a built in level. Now, I don't know how perfect it is. I still wouldn't bust it out if I was like, you know, building a house or something like that. But when I need to like quickly level off a tripod or just make sure like something's straight, I use this all the time. In settings, battery, enable battery optimization charging in the battery health category. This basically keeps your battery health topped off. I've had my iPhone 14 Pro since day one, and it's still at 100% battery health because of this feature. Basically what this does is it learns when you charge your phone, so that way it's not constantly keeping it at 100% when it's on a charger. So I charge my phone when I'm in bed at night, so you know, from 10 o'clock to 5 a.m., it's, it's not just staying at 100%. It learns that, hey, Chris gets up about 5 a.m., so we're gonna top it off a little bit before then. 
I also have the clean energy feature on, which just basically means it charges primarily when clean energy is available. The iPhone has built in picture in picture, just like the iPad. I don't use this that much here because it does take up a big portion of the screen, but it is nice every once in a while if I'm watching something and I want to take a note of like whatever I'm watching, I can just, you know, close the YouTube app or close Safari, and then I can go into my note taking app and write a note. My thanks to Drafts for sponsoring this video. I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can go check it out. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.